The arrival of December early signing day signals the culmination of step one on the journey towards the 2021 season. Reinforcements on the way, a reloading of the roster, playmakers who will make an impact for years to come. We're live on the campus of FIU. Most NLIs have been signed and sent, perhaps a few more to trickle in throughout the day, though it already has been a terrific morning in the Landon facility. Glad to have you with us here at FIU alongside the head coach, Butch Davis. I'm AJ Ricketts. Thanks for joining us on Facebook Live and happy holidays to all of you. Coach, season's greetings and congratulations on the early yeah. signing day. Well, you and your staff have put in a tremendous amount of work to get to this point, and I can only imagine the challenges <laughs> of, of trying to recruit in the last nine yeah. months. Well, thank you, AJ. Obviously, it's a, a very exciting day. For all my coaching career, you always talk about, like, what's one of the most important things of building a program and having success in the future, and it all boils down to recruiting. And uh, uh, this year, we added a new person, a player personnel director, or recruiting coordinator, Brian Overton, yeah. came and joined us a couple of months ago played an unbelievable role in helping us put this recruiting class together. Uh, our assistant coaches, they do a great job. And, and, and this has probably been one of the most challenging recruiting years that you could ever even remotely imagine. I mean, obviously, no, no, no camps in the summertime where you had kids on campus. Yeah. You got a chance to meet them and what kind of player they were, measure them, height, weight, their speed, and all those kinds of things. Some of the schools, obviously, high school film, they didn't start the season back in August or September. Some played late. Some states didn't play any high school football. So our coaches did a terrific job in trying to narrow down who could be players that could come into this program and have an input into it and make an impact. And, uh, you know, one of the things, once you get into years three, four, five, as you start to build your program, you know, now you don't have to go out and, and say, God, if we don't get these kids, if we don't get four or five at this position, we're going to be in trouble. Now you can cherry pick and you can make sure, you know, and, and basically, to be honest with you, we yeah. signed somebody at almost every single of the positions and, and we're still recruiting. We've yeah. still got some scholarships for the February 3rd uh, National Signing Day in the second semester. So things were good today and we got some electric, great, good players. You've had to be creative in how a number of normal things in the, in the recruiting process <laughs> are, are managed. Uh, how, how do you evaluate talent in, in an era? Yeah. And the, the on-campus visits, you know, how have you had to adapt well, to what AJ, you normally are used to? It's crazy. Okay, <laughs> the, the talent part of it is the coaches and, and everybody watching the film and watching the kid and not just watching maybe one or two games. Now you better watch a lot. You better watch their junior year if they played their senior year against high quality pro uh, teams that they played against sure. how, how performance were they how you know how how productive were they how many yards did they rush for how many catches did they have and all those things offensive linemen were they dominant at the line of scrimmage defensive linemen so those that was one aspect of it right. and this is one of the things that i've never done before and i wasn't sure how it was going to be was how do you do a home visit because i love going into the homes and sitting on the couch and talking to mom and dad and the grandma and, and, and the, the student athlete that we were recruiting and you're in the living room and you could have that you know face-to-face -face right. conversation. Well, we created a Zoom version of that. We created our own version of a, of a living room with a couch and, and a coffee table and some, some FIU stuff. And then they did the same thing. So it, was, it actually worked out. It was almost like we were actually doing a home visit. Yeah. And uh, you kind of apologize that you didn't get a chance to bring them on campus. Some of, the, some of the recruits, AJ, one of the things that I thought was really kind of cool mm -hmm. is that they actually drove down here. Yeah. And even though we couldn't be involved in a campus visit, but they drove down on an afternoon after they got off work mm -hmm. and they went around campus. They looked at the dorm, the stadium, a lot of the things on campus. So, you know, you just try to do the very best that you can. Yeah, good for them to be able to f feel the resort vibe on campus. Yep. And if not, you've got Zoom nailed down to an art at this point. <laughs> <laughs> at this point anyway. No so kidding. We were ready to go. All right, Coach, we've got five recruits on offense. We're going to go over eight commitments on defense. We're going to spotlight each and every one of them. You about ready? Ready to Absolutely. go? Absolutely. All right, let's, let's get roll. into it. Let's, let's start it. on the offensive side of the football in the backfield with Katravis Jeter out of Miami Carroll City High School. Always a lot of uh, solid products coming out of Carroll City. KJ Jeter, third game of 2019 against Miami Central. Awkward tackle, gave him a high ankle sprain. He told the trainer to tape him up because the team needed him. Went on to score three touchdowns in that game on an injury that ended up being a slight fracture. 
He's competitive, was focused on being an early enrollee so he can get adjusted and compete for playing time. What do you admire about a back like a Travis? Yeah, well, obviously the toughness, that's very important. But one of the things when you watch this young man play, the explosiveness and the big plays, and he does everything. I mean, you see this play right here, great vision. He sees where the ball is, puts his foot in the ground, cuts, and comes out the back door. The other part of it is, is that you see him catch the ball. There's going to be a clip on here that's one of the best catches that I have seen in all my recruiting years where he actually is in the end zone and he reaches back and picks up the ball. Uh, and then the other thing is, is that he's a complete player that he does all the blitz pickup. And, and you just love getting running backs into a program that can do all three things, yeah. but they are explosive. And, uh, and obviously, uh, you know, Devontae Price this year was one of the best running backs in all of college football this year. In only five games, he almost came up to 800 yards. So I think these guys that are coming in, I think they're going to love being a part of this offense. Yeah, Tim Harris has a lot to work with next year. He does a great job. KJ with ranked as the 10th best all-purpose back in the nation by 24-7 sports and plenty of SEC interest in him as well. Moving to the wideout spot, Artez Hooker, 5'9", 160 wide receiver out of St. Petersburg, product of Lakewood High School, a talented Lakewood team. Virginia Tech, Iowa State, sent him offers, more than 1,000 yards receiving in his career. And Coach, he's another one of these guys who's oh, really boy. been willing to do whatever the team needs out of him. He's a very versatile player. Yeah, you, and you love the fact, first of all, the video is going to show uh, unbelievable speed and explosiveness. But when you see this kid, when we watch him, he ran routes just like that on the slot. He made that slot, the defensive back, put his foot in the ground and just completely blew him away. Yeah. He's a tough kid. He blocks good on the perimeter. If he has to, he can do punt returns. He can do kickoff returns. I mean, he's going to be an impactful offensive type of a player. And, uh, you know, you just love the way in which he, you know, he can catch the football. He makes difficult catches. And one of the things that really separates a lot of people is like things like this run after catch you know how do they make a, a five yard route turn it into 65 yards and obviously he does a great job with that maybe one of those guys ends up being a great steal for the program oh, if COVID no didn't hit a lot of interest maybe coming from power five programs instead he's making his way to yep. miami a top 200 receiver uh, from 24 7 sports moving forward to the tight end spot daniel pilgrim out of north fort myers high school mm -hmm. 6 3 2 10 he's a tight end but last year he ran a kickoff back for a touchdown <laughs> in the playoffs against Fort Myers. He had never even been a kick returner before that game. He's talked about how excited he is to block, to, to get out in the slot, to catch passes, do whatever he needs to in this yeah. offense. And, and you might hear a cowbell in the stands next year. His mom, Sally, ringing it loud and proud yeah. every game for Daniel, who joins a terrific tight end room. Yeah, I'll tell you what, AJ, I mean, he's, a, he's a terrific athlete. And one of the things, you know, uh, when you look at players like this, and sometimes maybe they not have played two, three years in high school as a tight end, but you can see them run routes, their hands, how they catch the ball, how they run after the catch. Obviously, he's going to have a chance to kind of grow into it. Uh, players that I had before I came here, like Eric Ebron, uh, yeah. Kellen Winslow Jr., Jeremy Shockey, all of them had a background very, very similar to him. They started off and they were a wide receiver. Uh, they grew into it. He's a 6'3", 215. One of these days, he's going to be 245, 250 pounds when he gets in our strength and conditioning program. And you love the athleticism and you love the competitiveness. Yeah, three-sport athlete. That's about par for the course for no a lot kidding. of tight ends. You recruit track, wrestling, basketball, uh, in addition to, of course, uh, football, which he will be playing here at yep. FIU. Moving forward to the offensive line, Kareem Hardin making his way to FIU mm -hmm. out of Fort Lauderdale, product of Stranahan High School, a blossoming prep program. Hardin Hardin's gained 40 pounds over the last two years, didn't start playing ball until he was 14. Recently attended both the Rivals and Under Armour camps in South Florida. He didn't lose a rep at either. As head coach said, watch the tape. He didn't <laughs> lose a rep at either camp. Syracuse pit, Kansas came calling right after, but he built a great relationship with Joel Rodriguez, our offensive line coach. And his coach, Travis Hardin, no relation, said Kareem's a guy who leads by example. You don't have to monitor him off the field. He wants to leave a legacy here at FIU. Coach, you've got a hard-working, yeah. high-character guy yeah. in Kareem Hardin. Yeah, and you know, AJ, obviously one of the things when you're recruiting offensive linemen, you want guys that are athletic. And this is a guy that's a 6'5". He might actually grow and become a 6'6 type of a player, uh, but he's got feet, he's got the athleticism that if you're going to be out there with the way in which defenses, they blitz, they got speed coming off the edge, you want guys 
that are tackles that have got really, really good athleticism. And, uh, and obviously, we really have a lot of high expectations. You've actually seen him play a little bit of defense, which shows you even a little bit more things, yeah. even though that's not where he's going to be. But it shows you a lot about how talented and what kind of an athlete that he is. Larry Bluestein, who is uh, essentially the mayor of South Florida football recruiting, <laughs> said about Kareem, sky is the limit for his yeah. potential. And he's been terrific on both sides of the football, which he Absolutely. mentioned. Absolutely. It'll be great to see what he can add in terms of depth of the line and effectiveness here at FIU. All right, final offensive guy to take a look at before we head to break. Wyatt Lawson mm -hmm. out of Plant City, Florida. Durant High School was a team captain as a junior, had double-digit Division One offers before this most recent season began. Coach, how important is it to add pieces and depth to the line this offseason? And what do you see in Wyatt yeah, Lawson? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. First of all, he's smart. He's a good athlete. And I'm going to tell you, one of the things that you love about this young man is, is the way in which he finishes block. He is a tough guy. He tries to finish blocks. He tries to pin guys. He tries to put them on the ground. And uh, he's got the athleticism that obviously you see him playing offensive center. He could be a guard. He could be one of those guys interior because of how athletic that they need to be on the interior against really good defensive linemen, linebackers at blitz. It's really important. And uh, you just love the way in which he competes, his toughness. Yeah. Uh, you talk to him, and you, he, he loves the idea about lifting, working out, getting stronger, loves football. And so that from, from our perspective, that's something that we're really appreciative of. And they're one of those guys along the line who's played on both sides of the football. He'll be very versatile yep. as he makes his way towards FIU. That's a look at the offensive side. When we come back, we'll spotlight the eight defensive commits to FIU thus far in our National Signing Day show presented by Cafe Bustelo. We'll be right back after this. Stay with us. everybody in okay today the focus obviously is is a great scrimmage okay great alignment great technique great effort and great hustle finishing blocks and stuff on offense on defense flying and swarming we will start off obviously it's going to be the number one kickoff return on coach Harrison okay everybody be there let's go right here guys family on three one two three family hey. break let's go hurry here we go guys let's go let's go Go be a master of your craft now. Drive, 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 drive. Good job, good job. Feeling nice job, guys. Let's go be a master of your craft. Be the best you can be. Put it away quick, Joe. Get it away. Don't let somebody come in and pull it out. Good catch. Nice job, Caleb. There you go. Put it away. Put it away. Execute, finish block. Here we go. Go, 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 go. Protect the football. Take it away. Good job, Benny. Good job. Here we go. Nice. Hey, Chase, just like you did, that last kick was perfect. Incomplete, second and 10. 2002, 2003. Go, 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 go. 1D, 1O, let's go, everybody up, let's go. Let's go, good execution, here we go. They cheer, they yell, they scream for the best move. And the FIU Panthers are going to show you why they'll dominate the field this season. But for the best moves off the field, Good Grief Moving and Storage is a team you can rely on. We ensure a stress-free move on time and on budget, locally or nationwide. And now, Good Grief is the official mover of the FIU Panthers. Let Good Grief be your official mover, too. Good Grief, moving in storage, your superhero movers. All right, welcome back to our National Early Signing Day show here at FIU. Butch Davis, A.J. Ricketts. Uh, Coach, you guys saw that practice clip there, the mic'd up segment. <laughs> I, I'm sure you're 
very much awaiting the, the practices where you can take that face mask off in the 90 degree. Yeah, <laughs> Did no you kidding. ever get acclimated to that? Yeah. Well, we, most of the coaches obviously you either wore a mask or you wore or a the shield, face shield one yeah. way or the other. And <laughs> so, there's sometimes that you wish you were the players you could have put on the helmet yeah. and you didn't have to do that. Right. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, hopefully that comes pretty soon. Soon, yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look at the defense here. First, Trevante O'Neill out of uh, Vero Beach High School. This mm -hmm. is pretty cool and full circle for you, coach. His high school coach, Randy Bethel, you coached him at Miami. Right. Our defensive line coach, Kennard Lang, was, was teammates with him there. So he said, look, you know, go, going to FIU, I, I know I'm going to be put in good hands. I have yeah. no qualms about going there. And, and he's been surrounded by talent, his former teammates on the D-line at his high school and now at LSU, UM, Florida. So, Coach, how, how full circle is it to have yeah. a guy like Trevante come into the program for well, you? It's great to get him. And yeah. obviously, uh, you know, you trust somebody like Randy Bethel. I mean, I've, I've known him ever since he was in high school, recruited him. He came to the University of Miami, and he's been involved in this young man's life for a long time. Yeah. And he talks about his character, his work ethic, his attitude, how, how passionate he is to be a good player. Then you turn the film on, and then you really get excited about him because you see him do a lot of things. Play on the edge, he comes off the edge, he gets sacks, tackles for the backfield. You see him at times where they move him down inside where he'll play a little bit of a three technique yeah. and uh, he can dominate up from the inside. But one of the things, and, and, and Kennard knows this, Kennard Lang, our defensive line coach, when you're looking at these kids, you're looking at guys that have got explosiveness, their first step explosive, how, how, how disruptive can they be and then their effort and their attitude and one of the things that you like about watching him is the number of tackles where he's chasing guys to the sideline right. always trying to be involved a top 100 strong side defensive and recruit excited to see what he can do here at FIU next up Keegan Davis and this is interesting I thought we weren't in his final three originally yeah. and then he ended up committing uh, a verbal to Marshall but how were you able to flip him? Uh, a, a solid recruit, played a DN, tight end, long snapper at Treasure Coast High School, an All-State player. How, how were we able to flip him from Marshall? Yeah, I think that there were several things. I think obviously the proximity to the campus for his family to be involved, yeah. and then he got it. Once he got a chance to start building a relationship with uh, with Coach Lang and uh, uh, Coach Harrison, who coaches our special teams, because this is a kid that I actually really truly love. Guys like this. Yeah. You just said it. He plays tight end. He plays defensive line. He's a excellent deep snapper so his value to this football program is excellent and and then you watch him and the watch the way in which he plays he gives great effort he's always tenacious he's always trying to you know create negative plays play in the backfield and and his effort is just outstanding so obviously you know I think there was a lot of things that played into the role I think sure. obviously you know coach Bethel will had a chance to be able to say what coach Lang would be like and what I would be like in his life Moving forward, Jordan Gerard, 6'3", 295, D lineman out of Bloomingdale yeah. High School. And a story time about this guy, because he had one of the best playoff performances we've seen, all right? Uh, seven A state playoff games against Tampa Bay Tech. Uh, he lines up as quarterback in the swinging <laughs> gate for him. He's a D lineman. He lines up as quarterback in the swinging gate formation. He throws a Tim Tebow jump pass right. to convert the two-point conversion. Third quarter, he lines up as the fullback, takes a swing pass, uh, scores a touchdown again. He's a defensive lineman. <laughs> Final seconds of the game. There's three seconds left. <laughs> he lines up at the three-yard line again at quarterback. Right. This time, he's running it in. He's 6'3", 295. No one stops him when they advance to the, yeah. the next round of the state playoffs. An incredible playoff game, yeah. and, and it just shows you the kind of athleticism that this guy has. Yeah, no doubt about it, AJ. And obviously, you described his overall athleticism, and obviously, he does a lot of that stuff. The high school coaches wouldn't do it if he wasn't good enough to be <laughs> able to do it, but it shows you his versatility. But the thing that we really fell in love with is, is his explosiveness at the point of attack to be able to dominate the guards and the centers. You can see him here. I mean, watch this kid pick up a fumble, scramble, run 40 yards before somebody can actually run him down. But when you watch, if you're, if you're a defensive coach and you're looking at guys, you want them to be guys that are disruptive. Yeah, I don't want guys that can just stand there and catch blocks and, and try to get off a block. Right. You want guys that can wreck blocking schemes and they, ca they cause problems in the backfield. And obviously, uh, you know, he does that. And he, he, you just fall in love with the way in which he plays. I mean, this is a young man that's going to have a great career here 
uh, just being a great defensive lineman. His teammates describe him as a quiet guy until the ball is kicked off, and they say he's the fire that ignites the whole team. <laughs> the, the, the important question is, can, can we use him like his high school did? Yeah. <laughs> Swinging gate, two-point conversion. Let me tell you something. There's a possibility. I mean, uh, the Chicago Bears, they put the fridge back there, his right? fullback on short yards and goal line. You never know. Yeah, no, this, that'll be a lot of fun to watch him in his career here at FIU. Uh, Gaithan Bernadelle, our next defensive recruit mm -hmm. spotlight out of Hallandale High School. Here's a couple nuggets about Gaithan. He's smart, a 4.1 GPA to his name. Uh, Larry Bloonstein actually compared him to former FIU linebacker Anthony Wentz, who yep. did great things here in Miami. And, and Bernadelle, he, he's confident, Coach. He said, look, I'm studying sport management. I want to understand contracts. So when I go to the NFL, I don't need an agent. He said, quote, I don't want to pay nobody 3% of my money. No <laughs> I, I like the way he thinks. What do you like about his yeah, game? I mean, obviously, I mean, he's a super smart guy, and obviously you love that aspect of it. But what you really like when you watch the football, this kid is a playmaker. He plays off the line of scrimmage, and he can fly to the football. You see him make plays in the passing game. You see him make plays blitzing. You see him make plays chasing football players. He's physical, okay? Yeah. And linebackers, he's got that instinctive, okay? You can see on this cut up right here, a little bit of a play action. Now all of a sudden he knows the ball is going to get dumped off. He, he, he has the instincts as a linebacker to understand what teams are trying to do, whether it's personnel groupings, whether it's formations, and he puts himself in a position to make plays. Three-star prospect by 24-7 Sports and a top 80 linebacker in the nation. Uh, among that spot. Yep. All right, Amari McCray, another linebacker yeah. making his way here out of Miami Northwestern High School. Uh, he's been playing in memory of his grandmother, Elaine Owens, since she passed of breast cancer in 2013. His verbal to FIU was on May 13th, the anniversary of her passing. He said that was in honor of her, and certainly Elaine is smiling down today as McCray nears the beginning of his collegiate journey. He said he learned to play linebacker by watching Ray Lewis on TV as a kid, and <laughs> what's not a bad person to try and emulate? No kidding. That's a pretty good model to right. try to look at and everything. And obviously, it's a great, he plays very similar to that type. I mean, he is physical, tough at the point of a of, of a attack, right. he, he runs sideline to sideline, and you saw the opening play, the very one wants an outside zone sweep, and he gets there, he knocks ball carriers back, and uh, you just love him. The other part of it that you really fall in love with, obviously, coming out of Northwestern High School, they've been two-time state champions. He's used to being around winning programs, what it takes to prepare to, to play great games on, on Saturdays, you gotta prepare during the course of the week, and you just love that aspect of it. Both of those linebackers, AJ, the one thing that's really good, they could play any of the position. They could play Sam, Mike, or Will. Right. That's their athleticism and their versatility. First team all day player, and, and if you're first team all day, usually there, there's a lot of collegiate programs that, yeah, that no want to scoop you up, and, and he is one of those heading to FIU. Demetrius mm -hmm. Hill, let's take a look mm -hmm. at the Miami Springs High School product. Uh, Miami Springs, remember another FIU Panther that came out of there? Maybe a T.Y. Hilton rings a bell. <laughs> Demetrius, though, on the other side of the football, ranks a top 75 safety nationwide. Bloomstein says he raises the game when the level of competition is elevated. Butch, he's a talented cover corner. Yeah. Uh, how do you see him fitting in in the DB realm? Well, uh, obviously, we signed three DBs today, and I like all three of them. And, and he is just, he's big, he's physical. And one of the things that you really look at the defensive backs, how well do they play balls in the air? Do they have the instinctive uh, ability to see how the ball's going to do? Can yeah. they track the ball? Can they make sure that they cover and complete? You see this young man, you see him play safety, you see him play corner, you see him play inside uh, as a nickel guy. So you know that he's going to have a great opportunity to make an impact. And you just see these things, the deep balls that are thrown, him being able to play the ball high at the point of attack, I mean, that's, a, that's very athletic on his part. That DB room is starting to get loaded with talent right now. Yep. Bryn Renner has to be appreciative of that. Another one we'll spotlight right now, Demore Jean Baptiste mm -hmm. out of North Miami Beach High School. He was coached by former FIU standout EJ Biggers as North Miami Beach. Uh, another coach there, Jeff Bertani, said he reminds him of a former Chargers standout that wound up at FIU, Jonathan Ciprian, who's gone on to a successful NFL career. Jean Baptiste said about his defensive strategy, I go for the big hit in the first quarter to get the other team scared. <laughs> and by the second half, I go for the takeaway. Yeah. He had four of them through the air and also forced three fumbles as well this past yeah. season. What kind of potential do you see with him? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that you kind of really fall in love with, the very first clip that you saw, you saw him playing safety, you see him playing corner, you see him, and one of the things anymore, AJ, obviously any of the defensive backs, you can't get that big, stiff, 
uh, type of a guy that you say the, the old school strong safety yeah. eight man in the box because people are going to be in four wide receivers those guys got to be able to cover wide receivers in the slot he could go in and be a nickelback he could be a dime back and so all of those things that you really like about his versatility all right those are a couple of dbs well let's take a look at one more <laughs> before yep, we finish off more. the defensive segment here jacoby bryant defensive back out of Kissimmee, florida product of gateway high school uh covet 19 shutting down spring ball perhaps limited his exposure to power five coaches who were mm -hmm. interested it came down to FIU and FAU, but the secret weapon here, defensive line coach Kennard Lang, he actually went to the same high school as Bryant's mother, so they knew each other from when Orlando Evans was a state powerhouse. Yeah. Teresa Bryant felt great that she knew someone who'd have her sons back here. And J Jacoby has been a DB, a wide receiver, a running back, a kick returner at Gateway, another very athletic product. Yeah, and uh, obviously, in the program. you see on film here, you watch the explosiveness, yeah. uh, the gigantic big plays running away from everybody that's trying to chase him. And obviously he's got terrific athletic ability and, and we feel really good. Jared Cruzy and, and Bryn Renner are two secondary coaches. They did a phenomenal job of looking at a lot of guys and realizing the versatility of all these players because as we talked about a while ago, if you just try to get a guy that can only play one position, it, it, it really hurts your recruiting class. Now you get guys that can return kicks, they can play nickel, they can play dime, they can play corner, and all of these guys with the speed and athleticism, they'll have huge, gigantic opportunities to help on special teams. A lot of ball hawking guys in the secondary yep. making their way to FIU. A lot of athleticism, certainly excited to see their progression here at FIU. That's a look at the eight defensive commitments. When we come back and wrap things up, we'll take a look at what's next moving forward for FIU here in our National Signing Day special brought to you by Cafe Bustello. Back after this. Hey, bro. <laughs> you trying to find some shade, bro? You trying to find shade by that pole? That might be the, the, the man to miss the legend. See that? See the that? man to miss the legend. That when we start blowing whistles. All right, what you want me to call you, little, little deer? <laughs> <laughs> you about it like a little deer. Now, you won't die. Give me three, two, one, one, one. Good job. Skill, skill. Easy stride. You got to feel it now. Come on. Hey, get it close. Now, let's seize the moment. Back with cycle, back with cycle. Ooh, I see, oh. I see you, baby, I see you. I see you, I see you, I see you. Dip like a waltz in the crescent. Yeah, with my own two eyes. Boy, you got you padded out today. You got to feel it now. Hey, going back, A shift. Knee up, toe up. A shift for 10. Shuffle, shuffle. Good job, good job. Hey, high knee for five. High knee for five. Let's go, be quick, be quick, be quick. Come on, Jackson, come on. Feet out in front, feet out in front. Ready, set, tight, way to go, way to go, way to go. Hey, what movie? Give me the movie. Oh, hell no. Hey, give me the movie that this song played in, what movie? One, two, remember from tight, that's, you just won yourself a Nobel Prize. Man. Hey, they could, they didn't know that. Jamal. Oh, oh, oh. Let's be quick on the whistle now, up on your feet. There we go. There we go. Saigon squat. Saigon squat. Ready, set. So, so this is Saturday now in the city. Barbecue, they warming it up. <laughs> so they got the grills warming up right now in the city. And you smell it coming out. We gotta get Swayze mic'd up more often. That was fun. <laughs> he's a piece of work. Yeah, I think he's singing some Phil Collins though. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's keep it that way, Swayze. Phil will sing that song. You know, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, just sing your heart out. You're fine. Uh, Coach, 
Solid day again. Congratulations yep. on the class here. Early signing day. You've got another one coming up, of course, uh, in February. But a good start here. Uh, your, your initial impressions and takeaways from the, the 13 committed here this yeah. morning. Well, the thing is, AJ, obviously we talked about it at the beginning of the show, that it's really important to get guys at all of the positions. We signed three defensive backs. We've got two linebackers. We've got three defensive linemen. We've got some offensive linemen, a tight end, a running back, wide receiver. So now we can cherry pick. We've got some scholarships available, sure. and we've been in communication with some guys that obviously on the February the 3rd, the next national signing day, now we've got some bullets that we can, if we find two, three, four, five guys at certain positions, we say, you know what, those guys are going to impact. They'll really, truly help our football team. One of the things, and obviously, A.J., I think anybody that loves football and follows it anymore, right. they understand about the portal and how that is. And obviously, over the Christmas holidays yesterday, I think there were 58 players <laughs> around the United States that got into the portal, yeah. okay? And there'll be more after the holidays and before the second semester. There'll be a lot more after spring ball, after people have spring uh, games. There'll be people. So if you don't have bullets, if you don't save two or three you know, scholarships, you may not have the ability to find somebody that could be an unbelievable great player for your program and so uh, I'm, I'm excited about the spring uh, opportunity to get a chance to continue to fill this class up and uh, the the depth yeah. and, the, and the ability of this team always excited to see what you guys can do in the transfer portal certainly we've taken yeah. advantage of it in the past and hey, there still might be a, a signing or two left today haven't yeah. signed yet no NLI so we won't announce that because we're committed to compliance okay no don't well, here's, <laughs> yeah. here's a negative yeah, yeah. thing about the transfer of the portal sure. two years ago at the American Football Coaches Association all the head coaches 128 of us were in there yeah. and they were talking about guys going into the portal in the second semester there was like 2,800 players that had jumped into the portal and of all the Division I football programs for the February signing day, mm -hmm. there was only like 250 scholarships. Wow. There was a lot of guys who jumped into that portal. So you got to be cautious about who you're looking for and can you find somebody that can make an impact into your team. Yeah, we, we could spend a whole show talking about the, the tangent no of kidding. the transfer portal, and it, it's obviously going to be – Fascinating to watch this year because obviously you know, seniors can come back. You know yep. it, they don't have to, but they certainly have that option to come back. Yep. So roster management, I I, I don't envy it, coaches <laughs> <laughs> and what, what will come up with uh, you know scholarships and coming freshmen no transfer. But that's just uh, that's just all part of it here. Last thing for you, Butch. Moving forward, next step. Yep. Uh, where do you go from here? Uh, you know, hopefully spring practice in, yeah. in a couple of months. I, you're still, as you said plucking and seeing what you can get uh, recruiting wise. Yeah. What's the next step here for FIU yeah, football? Obviously, AJ, one of the things that probably hurt our football team and our program and maybe some other schools, I'm sure a lot of people went through it, not being able to go through and having a spring practice yeah. and having a great off season conditioning program. We got about five or six weeks before we had to shut the campus down last year, had to send players home. They weren't able to come back for like five months. So hopefully now we'll be able to have them the entire second semester get a chance to go through an off-season program for like eight weeks, nine weeks with yeah. Coach Swayze, then have those 15 perfect days because there's young guys. I mean, it devastated our quarterbacks to not be able to go in and scrimmage and have spring games and those kinds of things, and then go back into the training, off-season conditioning and running for the next three months before yeah. you get ready for the training camp. So hopefully it's somewhat in the normal football world. Hopefully that's a little bit what we have. Certainly looking forward to the more traditional model yeah, of a no football kidding. season and maybe fewer nasal swabs up, up the nose. But regardless, yeah, we'll, we'll still get gonna after be it. We're doing that. <laughs> we're not changing that yet. You know? Still got a little bit. We'll, we'll get through it. We'll be Absolutely. fine. We'll get after it. Coach, appreciate the time. Thank you. And AJ. congratulations on an early signing day. Thank you for watching on FIU Athletics Facebook Live. Happy holidays to you and your family. We'll see you for National Signing Day, February edition, in a couple of months. Butch is going to head to his press conference right now. And we bid you adieu. Thanks for watching. I'm AJ Ricketts. This is our National Signing Day special brought to you by Cafe Bustelo.